Hello and welcome to the first video of the FP1 chapter Matrices. On the screen as a starter question, you know what to do. Here we have a plus b for 5 plus minus 3, 2. And we just add the top elements together and the bottom elements together to give 1, 7. Part b. 3 times b, we multiply the 3 by each of the two elements to give minus 9, 6, and part c, 3 times b, which we've just got there, minus 2 times a, gives us a result of minus 17, minus 4. And there we go. In this video, we're going to introduce matrices. We'll look at a few important matrices and then some basic operations, which are very similar to the ones we just did there in the starter question. In the second video, we will look at multiplication of matrices. And in the third and final video, we'll do these two together, the determinant and the inverse of a two by two matrix. So to begin, a few definitions for us. A matrix is an array of numbers set out in rows and columns. The numbers in a matrix are called elements. You could argue that it doesn't have to be numbers, but of course in a maths course, numbers are what we're using. So something like this. 723 minus 104 is a matrix. And you can see I'm using the brackets very much like the vectors, but this time instead of one column, we've got three columns. And I can refer to an element, let's say I want to talk about this 4 over here, I can say it's in the second row, third column. And we use the rows and columns for a different purpose as well. We use them to describe the size of a matrix. So the number of rows, in this case we've got two rows, and the number of columns, in this case three columns, we write that as an n by m matrix. So the one I've got here in pink is a two by three matrix, because it has two rows and three columns. Vectors, of course, are usually a two by one or a three by one if you're working in 3D vectors, because they just have the one column. If you have the same number of rows as columns, then that is said to be a square matrix. So here, for example, if I write a two by two square matrix, like so. Now there are a couple of special matrices that you need to be familiar with. The first one is called the zero matrix. And this is just a matrix where all of the elements are zero. And it doesn't matter what size it is, so long as they're all zero, you can call it a zero matrix. Often, a bit of notation for you, we use a bold letter to stand for the name of a matrix in a textbook. For example, you might see a bold letter A, a capital A. And here we've got a bold zero. So all of these are considered zero matrices. The second special matrix you need to be aware of is called the identity matrix. And this has to be a square matrix and it will have ones on its leading diagonal. That means from the top left down to the bottom right and everywhere else it will have zeros. And because this is specifically for square matrices, we write it as I1, I2, I3, etc. The I stands for identity, and the 1 tells you it's a 1 by 1, or a 2 for a 2 by 2, 3 by 3, and so on. So the 1 by 1 identity matrix is just a 1. The 2 by 2 identity matrix has 1s on the leading diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. The 3 by 3 shows the pattern a little bit more easily. One's on the leading diagonal, zero's everywhere else, and so on. Okay, that's most of the definitions. Now let's have a look at some of the operations. We've got matrix addition, subtraction, and multiplication by a scalar, and they're all more general forms of what we had in the starter with vectors. So if you're happy with your vector work, these should be quite straightforward for you. For matrix addition, the matrices must be the same size. Then we just add the respective elements together. For example, with a 2 by 2 matrix, you have to have another 2 by 2 matrix 
and then you just do a plus e to give this one and b plus f to give this one and so on obviously the same here for subtraction you can also see straight away from this definition that matrix addition is commutative so it doesn't matter which of these two i put first it will give me the same answer so in general a plus b is equal to b plus a and you can see i've used the bold capital letters here to stand for these matrices that's a fairly standard notation for multiplication by a scalar you just multiply every element of the matrix by that scalar as we did with vectors so here we've got three times this matrix so we do three times each of the elements and we get this so a few examples given that a is this b is this c is this and d is this find stating the size of each answer matrix a plus c so we've got two three minus five one plus minus one three zero two so first row first column element plus first row first column element and that's two plus and minus one gives me a one in the first row first column element and then you do the same for all the others three plus three here is six minus five plus zero and a one plus two that is part a on to part b here we have d four five minus one minus b eight one minus four and that is equal to minus four four and three i've just realized i haven't finished part a so let me go back here this is a two by two answer matrix and here we've got a one by three answer matrix on to part c four times the matrix c is four times each element minus four twelve zero eight and part d half of b plus three times d so we want a half of b which is eight one minus four plus three lots of d four five minus one and that will give us four half minus two plus 12 15 minus 3 which will equal 16 for the first element 15 and a half or 31 over 2 for the second element and a minus 5 for the third element and i've done it again this is 2 by 2 matrix and this is a 1 by 3 matrix and there we go second and final example if a is this b is this c is this given that 2a plus b equals c find the values of the constants little a little b and little c so they're telling us that two lots of 2 3 a 2 minus 5 1 plus one lot of b 7b minus 3 3 1 minus 2 is equal to c And you probably don't need to write all of that out to see what we're going to do we've got two times a plus minus three has to equal minus one so i can deal with the elements individually we've got two a minus three has to equal minus one so a is equal to a one for the first row second column elements we've got two times three that's a six plus b must equal five so b must equal minus one and for the c we've got the second row first column elements which gives us a four plus three equals c so c must equal seven and that should be enough for you to have a go at the questions from exercise 5a and maybe i'll see you for matrix multiplication in the next video